Hi, in this video, we're going to be going over how to add a functional zipper to our garment in Clo. And so I have this existing dress right here that I created and I want to add a zipper at the center back um, neckline right here down um, the center back. And so you can see on my pattern, this is the back piece on my 2D window that we're looking at here in the 3D window also. Um, if I wanted to add a zipper, um, the best way to construct that could be up to you however you want your physical garment to look, but this pattern does not have a seam in the back. So the first thing I would probably do for my own construction of my physical garment is add a seam here if I did want that physical seam there also. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is actually to delete the symmetric editing of this pattern piece because you can see it is unfolded with symmetric editing. That's what that um, dotted blue line tells us there. And sometimes when we're applying a um, zipper to a pattern that is linked or has symmetric editing, it can cause some problems because it can try to put both sides of the zipper on both sides. That's just something that I've learned. So I'm just going to click on those symmetric lines and delete them. And because we have a collar piece here also, I'm gonna delete it from the collar too because our zipper will be going through the, the neckline um, and then also through the back bodice too. So I've deleted the symmetric editing and now I'm going to just add a back seam at the center back here. And I'm gonna do that with my internal line tool. So I'm gonna go to my internal polygon slash line and I'll start at the um, neck here. Click and then double click to complete that internal line. And if you have questions about internal lines, we go over them in depth in a different video. And I'm gonna link to that right now because I am just using them pretty quickly right now, but I go over them in a lot more depth there. So I'm going to do the same thing on our back bodice, just clicking to start my internal line, double clicking to finish it. And now I have an internal line going down the center back of those two pieces. So now I'm able to cut them. So I'm gonna to go to our edit pattern tool and right click on both of those internal lines and choose cut. I could do cut and sew, but I'm actually about to adjust the sewing anyways for our zipper because we don't need it to be sewn together on the seam underneath our zipper. So that's why I'm actually just choosing cut versus cut and sew. And so if you already had a pattern with, that you were adding the zipper to that already had a seam down the middle or that was um, broken into two pattern pieces, you would need, would need to do those steps that we just did. But for our example, um, with one pattern piece, that's how I wanted to start it out. So for my zipper, say for example, I want my zipper to go down the back, maybe seven inches. Um, you could choose whatever size or length you wanted your zipper to be. But if I wanted mine to be seven inches, then I'm just going to make a mark on my pattern using the add point slash split line tool. And that's underneath our edit pattern tool. So if I hold down the edit pattern tool, which is that open triangle, you'll see add point slash split line at the bottom. But the shortcut for this is also X on our keyboard. This is going to um, give me a tool where I can add a point to my um, pattern edge or internal line, or basically split the line into two. And I'm gonna do that just to mark exactly where I want my zipper to go down to. This will make it a little bit easier later on. So I'm gonna to go to near the top of my back neckline, and I'm just gonna right click anywhere on this pattern edge. Because how this works is kind of similar to our sewing, where whichever side we start on, that's going to be our basically line one. So if I click oh, here closer to the neckline, um, then this will be considered my first segment because I am splitting it into two segments. But if I click closer to down here, then down here will be close, will be my segment one. So whichever edge of the corner you start on or you click near closest to, that is where segment one will be. And there's a, actually a couple of different ways you can add a point or split a line. The first one is just clicking. 
and that will add a point or split the line to wherever you click. Um, you can see right there, but I'm going to click Command Z and undo that. Because the other way we can do is also we can right click instead of left clicking. And that's what I was talking about line one and line two. And um, I think I said I wanted my zipper to go down seven inches. So I'm just going to type in seven inches for our line one and it will automatically calculate our line two to whatever it needs to be. And so line one is what I clicked closest to, which is what I wanted my neckline down to be line one. So that is good. And I can get a preview of it right here. But there's also some other um, types of splitting lines we can do. If I wanted to split by length, I could um, type in the segment length that I wanted and the number of segments. Or if I wanted them evenly split into um, a certain number of segments, I could do uniform split. But once I'm happy with my settings right there, I'll click OK. And then the same thing for the other side, right clicking closer to the neckline so that that will be my line one. Type in seven inches and choose OK. Now I am ready to go to my zipper tool and I'm just going to hover so that I can see the neck piece and the bodice. And our zipper tool is located in the 3D toolbar. Down here near the bottom, you'll see the tool. It kind of looks like a zipper with fabric on both sides. We have our regular zipper tool, which will allow us to add zippers. And then we have our edit zipper tool right above that, which looks the same, but with a cursor next to it. So I'm going to click on the regular zipper tool. And this kind of works similar to free sewing. So you can see when I'm on my um, pattern edge, I get like a highlight blue dot showing me where I am in the 3D and the 2D window. You can technically add zippers in the 3D window, but I think it's much easier to do in the 2D window to make sure you're clicking in the right spot. Um, because especially with our garment already simulated, it would be really hard to make sure I was clicking on the correct side of our back bodice. So I'm just going to click where I want my zipper to start hover down that line. And you can see when I get to this corner point, the blue dot automatically appears to, here too. It kind of jumps down and knows that those pieces are sewn together and touching. And so I didn't click again. I just kind of jumped from that point where it left off to where I wanted it to continue. And then when I get to this seven inch dot right here, I can click right on that dot. And then I will just click on that point one more time to let clone know I'm done with that half of the zipper. Then I'll jump to the other side, do the same thing, hover down, haven't clicked again, just kind of jumping to the point where I want it to continue. And you'll see when I get close, it actually turns into that dark blue dot. It's the same thing that we have for sewing that lets me know both halves of my zipper are the same even length. And so I'm just going to click on that blue dot, click again to let Clo know I'm done. And then that zipper has been applied. The last thing that I want to do is I actually want to sew together my back bodice down here at the bottom below the zipper because we did just cut the pattern apart. So this is not sewn together yet. And I can use free sewing for this because we did add a segment there at the middle, so I can just really easily and quickly add segment sewing. And so now we should be good to go. So I'm gonna turn on simulation. And our zipper has been applied. If I wanted to go in and add any customization or change my zipper at all, I can always go into um, my property editor by clicking on my zipper, really by clicking on any part of my zipper. So right now I have the zipper tape selected, but if I go into my property editor, I have some options to um, adjust it, including the teeth width, the total width, the thickness. So maybe I wanted my zipper to be um, a little bit more narrow, maybe uh, a quarter of an inch. 
I could type that in. And then it becomes smaller. Maybe I want my teeth to be a little bit smaller to match that um, smaller amount. So I could maybe make them just like 0.1. I can also choose to have the zipper fastened or not. So if I maybe want it to just be a trim option shown, but I want it to be open, I can always click fasten and adjust it to kind of have it laying however you want. To refasten it, um, you always just wanna make sure you click back on the zipper tape and then we can check that box again and simulate. We also have some options to adjust the color. So maybe I wanted it to match the color of the dress that I have. I can click on that. That will adjust the color of the zipper teeth. Because I'm in the teeth tab right here under material, but if I wanted to do the same thing for the tape, I could switch into that tab and adjust the color. We also have opacity we can adjust and some other settings also. But I can always do the same thing for our zipper stopper. So if I click on that down at the bottom or if I click on our zipper pull or slider, I get some options here in the property editor. Um, for example, choosing if I want a one way or two way zipper and then a drop down where I can choose if I want um, a different type of zipper slider and puller. Some pictures here of different ones I could choose from. Same thing for the puller. The top stopper, the bottom stopper. And also um, choosing if I wanted my zipper to be reverse direction. So if I wanted it to start or open down here. And then again, our color options too. So maybe I want this to be the same color or if I wanted it to be a contrasting color, I can select that also. And then some other settings too. And so our zipper puller, it's also going to automatically be a metal material. And so when we go into the property editor here, we should see that type of material. Um, actually, this one, it looks like it's automatically matte fabric, but if I wanted it to have more of a metal finish when I go into my render window, I could choose like fabric shiny, which would be a little less shiny than metal or I could choose metal and that would make it a lot shinier. That will adjust slightly how it looks here in our 3D window, but when we go to render, it will appear a lot more like metal. And so that's how we can adjust or create a zipper. If I ever wanted to edit the length of my zipper, I could go here to our edit zipper tool and click and drag the length of my zipper to adjust it. And that would shorten it And you can see it is shortened here, but we didn't sew all the way up there. So I could go in and edit my sewing and expand that sewing. Up to the bottom of our zipper. If I wanted to make that adjustment. But that's the basics on applying a zipper and then also customizing it.